In this video cheat sheet, we're going to configure an iBGP peer in Autonomous System 1 between Router 2 and Router 3. First, we're going to start off with some baseline show commands, show IP BGP and show IP BGP summary to see what's in the BGP routing table and to see if any adjacencies have already been formed. Then we're going to do on Router 2 a debug IP BGP and then the loopback address of router 3 updates to see what updates are being exchanged. And then we're going to configure the iBGP peer once again between router 2 and router 3 and then do some verification show commands to see if anything has changed from the baseline. So let's look at the network topology. Here in Autonomous System 1 we're going to configure an iBGP peer between router 2 and router 3. So let's get started. Do show IP BGP sum and show IP BGP on router 2. So from the last video cheat sheet, we brought up an adjacency to autonomous system 2, which is router 1. And we're receiving seven prefixes over that adjacency. And here's those seven prefixes. And you can see the next hop is router 1. So let's set up the debug of IP BGP and then router 3's loopback address and then update so that we can see what changes as we bring up this iBGP peer. Now if you remember from the last video cheat sheet, all we had to do to configure an eBGP peer was this one statement right here, the neighbor address, and then we would point it to the other end of the directly connected link and tell it what the neighbor's remote AS was. Or well, with iBGP, the best practices is not to point the neighbor to the directly connected link on the other end, but to point to the neighbor's loopback address because it's inside your autonomous system and it's a stable address. The interface could be flapping and as long as you have another IGP route around the other way, your BGP adjacency will stay up. So you want to peer to your neighbor's loopback address and then you also want your update source that you're sending your prefixes from to be from your loopback and this overrides the default behavior which will be con which will be explained in the configuration guide so let's go ahead and configure our neighbor to router 3 in RAS and updating the source of the packets the BGP packets that are going to be sent out from the loopback 0 address of router 2 now let's do a show IP BGP sum and show IP BGP again. And now we're trying to become active to router 3 where before we were only up to router 1 and it just moved it on me, changed the output. But anyway, you get the idea. Here's the active to router 3. And then we still have all these prefixes from router 1. So let's go over to router 3 and do a show IP BGP sum over there and I'll put some space here so we can see if when the debug information comes through. Show IP BGP sum there are no adjacencies up to router 3 and router 3 should be originating this prefix right here when the adjacency comes up. So once again here on router 3, we're going to point the neighbor address to router 2's loopback. This says that it's an iBGP, and we're going to override the default behavior, and the update source will not be the link that's directly connected to router 2, but the loopback address, because once again, this is best practice for iBGP peers. So we've configured our neighbor. Do a show IP BGP sum. Okay, our adjacency has come up. Our adjacency has come up. And it has now received eight prefixes from router 2. Sees router 1 as the next hop for all of them, which is fine. That's exactly what we want. Let's go back over to router 2, and you see we have all this information now coming from router 3. And do a show IP BGP. We now have the prefix coming from router 3. So that is how you set up an iBGP peer. We did some baseline show commands. We did some debugs so that we can see it as it progressed through. We configured an iBGP peer and then did some verification commands.